What's up everyone? Welcome back to Seek and Destroy Plays. And we just finished our stream with Kevin and that was a lot of fun. But I figured, you know what? I got maybe about 20 minutes or so that I could fill uh, for time. So why not play the DLC that probably matters most to the storyline? There is the bedroom DLC, but that one, you know, we already know all the puzzles and granted we know all the puzzles and things to do in Daughters, but there's more of a narrative going on there. There's more of a story. Uh, this bedroom tells uh, an extra side mission with Clancy as does 21 and Nightmare. So this is pretty much the Clancy DLC, uh, but this actually sets up Zoe's story, which will probably have a bigger payoff when we play the end of Zoe uh, next week when the DLC comes out. And then also uh, when we play the new um, Not A Hero stuff. So this we're going to get into tonight. Everyone who's here, thanks for sticking around for a little bit longer. Let's start up with Daughters. Three years ago, the Bakers were like any other family. They had just finished a family dinner, listening to the raindrops hammering against the window panes as they ate. A moment of peace and quiet. Their last for some time. All right, John, will you see me? Grifter, everyone's back. Sweet. So we'll just, you know, do our thing, talk, play this probably take us like maybe 20 to 30 minutes to beat this i don't know what ending i'm going to go for yet we'll just kind of play it by by ear as i'm staring at zoe's ear here <laughs> um but thank you all for hanging out with us get another episode in tonight And again, uh, make sure you're following Kevin Craft. If you're watching this later on YouTube, a lot of his links are down in my description box. Kevin Craft does stuff on YouTube. And then you also have uh, at Kevin Craft on Twitch. Make sure you follow him. And uh, now that he's finishing finishing up his scripts and now he's got some work he's doing right now, but when he gets through this work, he, you know, he'll probably stream a little bit more um, until, and at least until his next writing project. So definitely give him a follow. And same with me. I have a writing project I want to work on in, in early 2018. I'll probably start it around March after I know everyone has got their Neverlands and, uh, or at least, uh, yeah, everyone got their Neverlands and everyone got their Elan Vitals. And I know I'm caught up on everything. There is another thing I'm going to write. And uh, I'll share that information with you guys at some point later. I'm sure some of you follow my Instagram. You probably know what it might be, but I still got to figure some things out on it. So in March, April, I may slow down the stream a little bit so I can get that done. Or I'll stream myself working on it. We did talk about doing those for creative streams a while back. So maybe we'll do that. Keesler Air Force Base, Biloxi, Mississippi. Any news on the damage from the storm? Sorry, I used to live down there. Found another one. Oh. Oh, she's so young. Yeah. How's all the guests? Sleeping, poor thing. Oh, so I remember one thing we got to do is we got to keep an eye on Lucas and his phone. Go get some fresh clothes from the laundry room, okay? Oh. Looks like there's some okay. sort of oil yeah. spill or something. Yeah. Let's get this poor girl some fresh clothes and into a warm bed. Mm. We'll put her in Lucas's old room. Oh, come on, kid, you put her somewhere else? Oh, Lucas, you just hush. Long up, run that room. Always want to put a bed breakfast. <laughs> Got your big break, didn't you? <laughs> get her to bed. <laughs> I'll put some soup on. Come on, Lucas. Oh, good night for soup, don't you think? Excuse me, Lucas. All right, let's... One zero one nine. Is that what it was? Okay. Yeah, that's a pretty cool little Easter egg that they threw in there. Um, where it's like, oh, if you want to like unlock this extra secret little thing, you have to. Um, oh wait, laundry's downstairs. You have to, you know, that one glimp, that one second there where you can look at his password. That's like that's the window that you have. All right. To-do list. Fix the upstairs window, nail up some plywood, call the glass people later, Lucas's birthday present, power tool, ask Zoe about it. Just a regular old family. All right. 
it. We're going to explore a little bit because I can't really remember what we got to do. Daddy loves his car. He'd be furious if I drove it. Cross at your own risk. Look at all those nice tires. Yeah, the only downside about opening that up now is that you still have to do it later. Like, that's a little bit of a bummer. And I can't remember... I can't remember what order we got to do stuff in. Oh. Yep. I know what we got to go get. We got to get the lock pick. I think the lock pick is in this room right next to the... Yeah, okay. I think it's over here. On, take that girl some clean clothes. I think, yeah, I think we just drop in. Grab the lock pick. And then we don't use it on that door, I mean on that, because I think that opens, uh, I don't, can't remember what we get, but it's like a, it's something that we don't really need. So yeah, okay, I remember a lot more of this than I thought. Maybe it's because I watched Where's Barry play it, like after we played it, I think I watched Where's Barry play it a couple times, uh, you know, so I think that's why it's a little bit fresh in my mind. But this is, whatever is in here is what we need. How are you guys doing tonight? Still hanging in there? Small component. Oh yeah, that's for uh, Lucas's room. I just like walking around this house, man. This place is spooky. Even though it's so nice looking. No one has cleared up the dishes. Oh yeah, we gotta go get the fork. Oh, that's right, okay. It's all coming back to me. We gotta get the fork. And the fork, uh... Prize those off. The nails off, okay. Oh, and the rope? Yeah, cause that's right, because we got to run down the basement and get the rope. Okay. Yeah, sorry, guys. This is all just... I'm just freaking out because it's all coming back to me. Uh, these accents and, and... Plus Scooter's accent and Borderlands earlier is going to send me back sounding like I did when I lived in Virginia. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I uh, I know if I if I do a southern accent for too long, it, it sticks with me for a while as well. I know how you mean. Hanging in there. How you living? What you drinking? Son of Bob's. I need to check. Well done, Chomley. Well done. Well played, well done. You're the best. Alright, so... I think that's our only shot in going up here, too. Again, there's all these little things, like, on our first playthrough of this, and I think a lot of people's first playthrough, they just missed it. You know, they just... They, it wasn't clear what you had to do, and so a lot of people were just doing trial by error stuff, but... No one really followed the, um, like, no one would have thought to look at the phone, you know? I mean, someone might have accidentally done it, but... Zoe, I told you to keep your dirty hands off my laptop. Dumb, dumb. Oh, you're just jealous of my hacker skills. This is what you get using the same password for your phone and your computer. Dip shit. One, zero. And I love that they use the Resident Evil 2 uh, sound effects again. Yes. Boom. The Fuck You List, October 2014 edition. Uh, October 1st, the old man slapped me right in the face for checking my phone during dinner. Fuck you. T October 3rd, I can't say one word about mama's cooking without getting yelled at. Fuck you. T October 5th, all I did was look in on Zoe when she was doing yoga and she calls me a pervert. Fuck you. October 6th, the old man got drunk and started throwing all my crap in that red box out on the veranda. Fuck you! 
All right. So there's our next clue. We got to go out to the veranda. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's give her the clothes. All right, little girl. Let's get you cleaned up. They're mine now. What? What? And this is the part of the game I, I don't like. I understand why it's there from a narrative standpoint. They have to, like, rush through. But... It just feels weird uh, that it's instant. Like you saw on the boat, everything was slow. The transformations were slow. Uh, now, granted, you could chalk that up to her losing control of her power and her trying to fight it. Um, you could you could easily come up with that kind of argument. Um, but uh, it's still it's like ah, come on, like a little bit more consistency in in how her powers work w would have helped. And then also the time, like. I feel like it's a fungus. It takes time to grow. It should it should naturally take time. Oh. What was that? I think that was downstairs. Lucas. Um, but yeah, that was my only kind of issue with with it from a narrative standpoint. It was just like, eh, it's it seemed. Lucas, what happened? Are you okay? Uh -oh. What's that? Are we at Are we at the mom already? Oh yeah, I guess so. Oh jeez. Yeah, the door shut somehow. I don't like that. Um, and then also, I think it shut again, because later I think we can escape with the keys, but I think we have to press it open a third time even. I can't remember if that's true or not, but... Oh, come on. I, I ducked. I ducked and I got stuck. Uh-oh. Yeah, still, even though they turn quickly, it is effective story-wise, like, because you're like, what the hell is happening? Like, it's it's just boom, boom, one scene to the next, just... Don't worry. It's a whole lot worse than it looks. Cleanliness is next to godliness. But me, personally, I like the slow horror. Like, I like it when it crawls under your skin and makes you think about it and why it's terrifying. Uh, but, this, like I said still effective and like I said you can't make it's not like the DLC could be like four hours long I mean it could they could have done that but especially since they reused all the environments um, but it's all good all right dude you're gonna get your rope So now I think we have to go we have to crawl through here, right? And then get the thing in the veranda. The red box, here we go. Yep. Oh. The dog head. We don't did it. So I guess this means we have to go for the true ending. 
So hopefully we don't screw this up. Uh, that's uh, not a kiss I'd want. That lady's scary. Oh, I know. Oh, jeez. Now we see Lucas get abducted. So all we got to do is make it to the back door, which sounds easier said than done. Because the mom is down here. enough noise to I was trying to distract her oh. I think we missed our window jeez I'm like trying to just trying to distract her, but which way is she gonna go? She moves fast now because she's irritated. Oh no, she's slowed down. We made it. It's well, we didn't. Real. We didn't make it till we get into the cabin, but I think we're good. Can we explore out here? I don't think I want to, though. No, I don't want to. Oh, there's Mia. Yep. Talk about creepy, and this is how she finds out, I guess, about the cure. So that's good. Not the band, although. If you haven't discovered them yet, figure it out. Get your shit together and do it. Uh, to the Baker family, thank you for saving my life, but please forget all about me. I uh, was assigned to transport some important cargo on that ship. Getting involved with me or that cargo can only cause trouble for your family. Big trouble. Please don't contact the police or state authorities. Just pretend we never met. And you saved me, so take this advice in return. If you see a girl near the ship who looks about 10 years old, do not approach her. If she talks to you, get away as quickly as you can. Just try not to make her angry in the process. If you've been feeling ill at all, then I'm afraid the worst may have already happened. It's a fate worse than death, and it can't be cured at a hospital. I'm so sorry. There is a way to stop it, though. Serum. If you inject, stop. Dup, 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 dup. The rest of the text is difficult to make out. Uh-oh. So this is, again, where Zoe learned about the cure, but it just seemed... Still, even setting this three years ago, you're like, it seems like so long um, for her to be, you know, to fight the infection off Zoe. But then you see here, like, okay, maybe Evelyn toyed with them for years. Maybe she made everything go back to normal for a while um, and tried really hard to just have like a family life. And then over the years, they kidnap people. I mean, you can, again, you can rationalize and explain it in a dozen different ways. It's not like none of this doesn't work. It's just so specifically can only work one way and a lot of those ways are built on what ifs and could it haves and and that's not really what you want when you write a story. You don't want you don't want that. Not always. You do want people theorizing and coming up with stuff like that, but you don't want to purposely leave holes in your story. Um, and they're not like they're plot holes. It's, that's not what I'm saying at all. Those are two different things. But to me, it feels like, ah, they could have, they could have filled in a little bit, just a little bit, or, or been a little more specific, I should say, with regarding certain points in the story. Now Zoe's mundane life has become a struggle for survival. She will spend her days slipping through the grasp of her now insane family, searching for the serum that Mia spoke of in her letter. 
The nights are marked by the family's murderous feasts, and Evelyn's body deteriorates as the months go by. Eventually, Zoe will encounter Ethan, her best hope at finding the serum, but she has a long way to go before that day, and so began the horror. And that was the one thing, like, when at the end there, when you have her turn and you see she sees Evelyn, I wouldn't have had her. I would have had to go into the the like the motor home and uh, and and not see Mia. Or maybe you see Mia on the bed and you're like, why? Because I'm still struggling. Why would Mia leave a note with a full explanation of what happened? Um, why wouldn't she just like walk out of the the motor home and just like go up and tell the family at you know to themselves if she had enough strength to write a letter and make it coherent she should have had enough strength to like walk and you know say something not necessarily i know but still in this fictional world so to me the fact that it ends like that i would have rather had her go into the room and you see a note starting to be written uh and then instead of it like being jumbled or being ruined the last sheet of paper being ruined i would have had it to where there was like claw marks or something like that and you and you could have explained it to where mia was last moments of sanity while Evelyn was sleeping upstairs. And then once Evelyn woke up and took over the family, she took over Mia again. So Mia never finished her letter. And then when you turn around, you see Mia standing there, like zombified Mia from the beginning of the game. Um, and then you see, okay, now she's hooked and she's part of this as well. And that adds more to Zoe because, you know, it shows that she is like the last survivor, you know, um, for you Resident Evil fans. John Lee says it's crazy loud next door. So we moved the mattress and box spring to the living room for the weekend. Kind of camping hashtag. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, sorry about the noise uh, from your neighbors, but kind of camping is kind of fun. She discovers the cure, but neglects Depeche mode. This is why we all the bad things happen. Exactly. John Lee. Um, but anyway, we're going to learn more about Zoe in the next DLC called the end of Zoe. And since I'm anticipating the, the, the Chris Redfield one so much, the not a hero one, I feel like we'll probably play the end of Zoe DLC first and then play the not a hero DLC. Um, I feel like that's probably a good order to go in because I'm a Chris Redfield fan and I want to save something that I hope is the best part of those two DLCs for last. And so the end of Zoe, uh, just to get a little book end for her story, I'd like to see because obviously that game, that mini game takes place after the events of the main story and daughter's DLC took place before the game. So that's a nice little bookend for the story there. And then hopefully the Chris Redfield story where he's a a going after Lucas is just the final threads, loose threads from the storyline, like like Lucas being still out there. We just wrap that up and maybe set Chris Redfield up for possibly being, you know, a return in Resident Evil 8. Um, that would be cool, working for Umbrella. That sounds like it'd be a fun game. But to all of you that are here tonight, thank you so much for being here and supporting the channel. And for those of you watching later on YouTube, thank you as well. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I will see you in the future. Peace.